Good day everyone, this is PU Insights. Today we're going to be talking about communication in ethics or ethical communication. And with me today is Debbie Oduntayo, a professional on this topic, to guide us through and give us a little one-two on what it's about. It's lovely to meet you here today, Ma. It's great to be here as we're well. We're so happy you're you. gracing the seat today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, Thank so you for having me. For it was nothing. actually... Um, an amazing experience. I've never had to do that with a class before. Mm -hmm. I'm a hands-on person um, and I do it more on locations, but with my team, production team and all, but coming to a class <laughs> to talk it's something to different. younger people and it was amazing. It was yeah. really I quite... Mean, people from the class told me that they really enjoyed your class. It's I could bubbly. not even believe it. <laughs> but, yeah, it it's was no nice. surprise at all. Mm -hmm. Ma, I want you to, so you see, um, communication in ethics is not a very talked about mm. topic per se. Mm. So I want you to like shed some light on your background. What really brought you into this course? Mm. Why, why communication in ethics? Why is it important to you? I think it had to do with my upbringing. Um, Communication, we are communicating now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, um, when we, when I was younger, really, it was like, I I was like, I was called a tomboy. <laughs> I was very active, agile. And my uncle thought my trouble was just, while well, I was just too much, he had to put me to do an internship in NTA. In a way to work so you. Do you. Exactly. <laughs> Calm down. You have too much energy. So, um, fortunately, he was uh, a, a very close friend to the DG of N um, NTA then. And he said, this is my niece. Um, she just finished from her, her, her high school and uh, she's waiting for her jam results. Get her something to do. Just so she just leaves the house. She has too much energy. And I got to NTA in Amadou Bello way there and I looked around and I was amazed that what was going on. I mean, this is the hmm. whole thing on its own. This is how, com this is how you know, series we watch and things we watch on television, the newscasters and everybody. So immediately that day as I was getting down from my uncle's car, I just fell in love hmm. with the production aspect and communicating and NTA and the whole. And so when you going, say, um, um, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I talk. <laughs> so no, yes, no, we love talk. it. That's what we're about. When you say, when you say, um, production, communicating the production, do you mean the aspect of speaking to the audience, or you mean just the nature of it in that kind of environment? So production is is a whole ball game on its own. So you have mm -hmm. your writers. You, 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 you actually, you, you have the idea first. You, the idea is maybe in the writer's head. He communicates it on paper, yeah. he writes it down, shares it with a producer and then a director and then a team put together and the um, magic the, happens. The magic happens. <laughs> like I said in the class, I am one that I don't like in front of the camera. I always like to be behind the camera and to make things happen, to make the people in front of the camera look good and to also pass on that information. That com what you want to communicate, be it through... Um, um, advertising, maybe you're advertising a product, maybe you're doing a radio jingle, maybe you're doing a TV um, series or a commercial or a documentary, to make it look good for those people and to tell the story the way it should be told so that people will watch and learn. Okay, so I'm a student it. of media and communication mm. and we have taken courses on external communication and internal communication that is within the work environment mm. and outside of the work environment. Mm. But then I think we should specify more, maybe let's say school or office. So in your background of maybe, let's even start from your internship mm. and then the other places you have worked mm. in, what can you say communication wise when it comes to ethics? that people could find you know to work on so that there could be a better communication or just a better spirit in the environment that's not just work work hmm. work work everything <laughs> first thing that's one way to put it yeah the loyalty um you want a brand you you want people to trust the brand you want people to know what the brand is for instance we always say that all the money Coca-Cola is making, they're making so much money. They still advertise. Yes. Why do they still advertise? The best the advertisements. And, and the best, and the yes. most spent money on. If you hear the millions they spend. Jingles, that they the do color. On it's everywhere, and it's so beautiful. But that's why they are still there, and that's why they are still big. 
Mm. because they keep making those adverts that drives you and I to take the Coca-Cola. I've been taking Coca-Cola for over 30 years. Ah, right? my, so I'm help not you. sure I'm not sure, right? Don't let me talk about Anyway, anyway. But that, they've communicated something to me. Mm -hmm. And I just love watching those um, those adverts. It just fosters a lot of good energy. Yeah. And it's yeah. like when you drink the Coke, exactly. you have good energy. But we have, have a lot of other brands that are doing it. So we don't want to start mentioning brands now. Even Biggie so, now, so Nigeria like here. Uh -huh. Even Biggie, all of them, they are all doing great things. Mm -hmm. you know, in, even Indomie. All these adverts are doing great things. So they are communicating what we want to hear. However, it's just like the cigarette one that I use as a, an example in the class. They have, so they, have the they have communicated. They have communicated that smokers are liable to die young. But we still have people that, that still smoke, don't we? Yes, we do. So um, unfortunately, we need to just, those that are communicating it, those that are receiving the communication, how are they? How are you communicating it? Are you communicating it indirectly? Are you communicating it directly? And that's where we come in as movie makers, as filmmakers, as TV producers. Are we able to communicate? communicate. Okay, let me bring it to Nigeria, mm. maybe just around. When we, um, Nigeria, the Niger Nigeria is a very nuanced place, a mm. very nuanced state. And I feel like there are several ways communication can be improved on. Mm. But then I want you to say some of your own first-hand experience. So when you've witnessed maybe unethical behaviors that led to maybe even legal ramifications mm. because of how communication was, maybe even within the employees, mm. uh, the employers, and even to the consumers as well. Have you ever come across that? And when you did, what was it like? How did it affect? to as somebody who is big on communicating ethically mm. unfortunately i have never because we one thing that we when we were starting our company the biggest thing for us is paperwork People. maybe because of my background as well i've always said before i have anybody um, on my set before i have anybody in front of my camera you sign a contract so mine My is dad told read, me you too. read your contract I, I send it to you like now we're working on a production right now mm -hmm. and the first thing i did was prepare the contract send it to all the crew members and read it so when you're resuming you you check you check again and then you sign the hard copy do you understand? It's always best so to nobody have can back. Double back nobody, and say... nobody. So when I say uh, no phones on my set, and you bring your phone on my set, and I deduct two thousand naira, and at the end of the production <laughs> we buy suya with it, you know that I have told you. So they don't. They, they are never angry. Oh yes. So, oh yes. But it's it's um, when communicating ver verbally is the worst that I can say can happen to any company or any organization always have your back make sure whatever you are communicating you write it down let there be either via email via um, a contra mous the, the mous are very very useful they teach us that in school you, yeah. too they mm -hmm. make sure we have emails for everything, everything. you want to borrow this class send an send email, an email. Exactly. you want to go here send so there an email. is no there is the, there is no disagreement or argument about it you collected it at this time to this time. this is what you said you were going to do so it's not no more verbal it's not what your word against my word so it saves a lot of people a lot of headaches and hassles true Okay, let's take this to the online space. Now, mm. we know that a couple times, in fact, it's almost second nature mm. for the internet to be a very volatile place, mm. for it to be very, very crass. People are very, very mean, mm. cutthroat. Mm. They, don't, they don't even recognize that somebody may have feelings. Mm. They just do especially some blogs even they would post at anybody's detriment mm. whatever mm. whatnot and what you cannot do to them they, and they exactly. cannot receive it they cannot receive a lot so of what how, they dish out exactly mm. they can't mm. too mm. but i think for them it's just money 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 mm. but then how as consumers as people who even maybe participate because i know in my school mm. there are lots of social media creators mm. content creators mm. influencers a lot of people have created and made 
big platforms oh. of these things and then it's very hard to protect themselves from that volatile place called the internet because so many of their you know contents can be taken out of caution out of no, context a context mm. better mm. for better um, word choice mm. so how can we protect ourselves you know from this type of problems because mm. you can't decide that you want to stop your career mm. because of what another person will say it's not a very smart move unfortunately the social media is a different ball game that i really do not understand and i'm, I'm not really yeah. trying to understand it <laughs> i think you young generation are the ones trying to understand it and trying to move along with it mm -hmm. um however you are very right the only way they can protect themselves is to watermark their content so if you watermark your content you put your signature tune or something on it or your signature logo on it that's the only way really for now because like i said in the class as well you can't sue and get away with it in nigeria you can't win it sorry in nigeria i know abroad people will think twice before they do certain things but in nigeria they don't really give a hoot so right now the best way for anyone to be able to you know keep your own your own um your own creation to yourself or to make sure that you benefit or you make money out of it is for you to watermark it put your uh, um, signature on it and protect yourself so, I mean, because this social media today, is out there it's, yeah. unfortunately it's so out that means there. at this point you say it's like a there's honestly no way around it you right just have now, to toughen right, up our associations are trying Regulatory bodies are trying. Like I know for now, even uh, when you, for you to for us to run a radio jingle in mm. our radio station, you must share with us your Afghan, um, um, Arcan Mas certificate. Tell us the radio station. We want to oh, one oh seven point one Lagos. Okay. Yeah. And we have an Ibado as well, ninety two point nine FM Ibado. Mm. And then we have our TV station, our production. Um, however. For you, for us to even run our adverts, we must have a, a certificate, and the certificate must have passed through. Or well, before the certificate is issued, it must pass through the processes you take in the product or uh, whatever to the regulatory body. They certify it, and then they give you the certificate, and then you share the certificate. Then you share mm -hmm. the certificate, and then we can run it. So if not, they will they will sign us five million and above. Uh -huh. So okay. so due to time constraints, mm -hmm. I'll just. Put Pusha, one little question because we have um, a younger demographic that watch um, our podcast or listen to it rather. Mm. But then, see with parents. <laughs> <laughs> see with parents. Mm. I feel like oftentimes because they are parents, they can just be very lackadaisical or nonchalant towards mm. communicating, you know, maybe nicely or optimally with um their kids or even with us teenage let me let me make it more specific mm. with me my age mates you know our parents can be very they will just say anything even if it's going to hurt your feelings they will just say it so because now they are parents <laughs> but why is that okay no it's not okay i'm not saying it's okay like i don't communicate like that i i always say my nices and my 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 thank yous and my please even to my children and I think I get my way a lot there. And I remember it's what I taught them when they grew, when, they were, when they were young and we used to travel. I remember we were in, um, um, in KLM and the air, the air hostess came to meet me where I was sitting in business class. The children were sitting in the economy class. Came to meet me and she said, you are the parent, you are the mother of those three young boys there. I said, yes. Said, you have done very well. They are oh, so polite. That's so they nice. know how to say their thank yous and their please. Not to talk about this, our you know and she went on and mm -hmm, i said thank mm -hmm. you god bless you. and immediately we got off the plane i told my children what she said and i said please for me your mother continue doing to this be and be nice and just say your pleases and your thank you it will not take anything from you it will just add value to you and to what see no, she doesn't know us from anywhere she hey, didn't Mama, know please we are part. talking about parents yes, here so, so now, please tell the parents, parents that are yeah, watching this show <laughs> That please, there should be more. But also, you know, it the way you are ways. with your own sons. It's no, definitely, ways. notwithstanding, it's we must respect our this, parents. It's children of these days, the generation.
generation now also think that the parents do not know anything. Hell. They think that we do not, we don't, we not see, we not shine no, our no, eyes. No, man, no, so that, they go that's, that's on and the they case. say, oh, you know, the way they communicate, they must have their way. They must do this. Uh, ah, no, the, daddy, this is what I want. Mm -mm. You also need to learn how to communicate because that's how we were taught. But my, you know, you said communication is a two-way thing. It's a two-way thing. And I'm telling you now that we're picking the scenario of a child who is communicating well. well but you know how mm -hmm. African parents, you are African no. parents too. Yeah. And we're talking about communication yes. ethics here. Yes, yes, So, yes. Uh, hey. <laughs> they, they will. <laughs> they, both ways. Let's leave it like that. Oh, yeah. No problem. <laughs> Thank you, Thank so you much. very much. Thank you so much, <laughs> Ma. You, We're so happy you. that you've graced us. See, this has been a lovely conversation. And to our viewers, our listeners, this has been Mommy Debbie. <laughs> We're so grateful she came today. There's been so many things to learn from this conversation. And you could always reach out to her personally if you have mm -hmm. questions. Please. I will see you on the next episode of Peer Your Insights. Thank you. <laughs>